How expert top ten kombucha making tips. How expert publishes quick how-to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more How Expert Top 10 videos in the future. Moving on, let's talk about the How Expert Top 10 Kombucha Making Tips. Number 10. Start with basic black tea. If you look at any resource on home brewing kombucha, you will find that many people often experiment with the types of starter teas they use for their brew. Since there is an enormous selection of teas to use, it can get pretty overwhelming for the novice brewer. However, the easiest tea to start with that will give you the highest chance of success is using basic black tea. It is crucial to make sure that the black tea is pure black tea, with no added ingredients or flavoring. The black tea leaves contain everything that is necessary for the yeast and fungus in kombucha to ferment. Adding anything else like artificial flavoring may result in damaging or spoiling your brew. It is possible to start with other teas like green tea, but black tea is a solid choice for success. Number 9. Search online for a starter. Tea isn't the only thing necessary for brewing kombucha. You will also need a cup or more of the starter brew and an optional pellicle. The starter brew will contain the SCOBY, symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast, which effectively means it contains all of the microorganisms that will be doing the fermenting of your brew. An easy way to start your brew is by looking at online communities and asking if anyone is giving away starter brews or pellicles. Looking at your local community on Reddit or through Craigslist is a good way to inquire about this. Since kombucha is very popular, there are bound to be plenty of people who are looking to give away their excess brews and pellicles. Number 8. Or buy a bottle of kombucha. If you cannot find anyone who is willing to give away some starter brew or a pellicle, then you can always purchase a bottle of kombucha and start it yourself. The bottle needs to be raw kombucha, so it cannot have any flavoring or additional ingredients. Using raw kombucha will provide a very solid base for your first brew. Recall that the SCOBY in the liquid is the most important part of brewing kombucha. Number 7. Clean your vessels and tools. Kombucha can be very easy to mess up if your tools and environment are not clean, especially at the very beginning when the SCOBY liquid is not as acidic. A good way to clean and sanitize your environment to ensure the best success is to clean with soap, water, and white distilled vinegar. The soap should not be antibacterial, as this may damage the microbes in the SCOBY. Using some soap, very hot water, and a few splashes of white vinegar, you can ensure that your vessel and tools are as clean as possible. Number 6. Use coffee filters. It is crucial to give your brew the air it needs to ferment. This is typically done by placing a cheesecloth over the mouth of your brewing vessel. However, if the opening is small enough, you can get by with using disposable coffee filters. These filters are designed to allow fluids and air to pass through. They are easy to find and easily disposed of. This makes them perfect for brewing kombucha. It is recommended you use at least two filters placed on top of each other and sealed with a rubber band to keep anything from leaving or entering the vessel. Number 5. Get the right bottles. Using the right bottles is extremely important. It is really tempting to use a plastic bottle or an older kombucha bottle for brewing, but the best choices are pop cap bottles. These are glass bottles that have a sealing and locking mechanism on the bottle neck with a plastic or ceramic cap. These prevent the precious carbonation from escaping your bottle, ensuring that the kombucha is nice and fizzy. These bottles can be purchased online or found in thrift stores. It is ideal to use a bottle with a circular base, as that makes it more likely to hold carbonation. Square bottom bottles are more likely to explode. Number 4. Label your brews. Once you get started with brewing, you will find it is really easy to brew large quantities of kombucha. 
However, you want to make sure you keep track of what you are brewing, what is fermenting, and what is ready to drink. As a result, it is recommended to create temporary labels using tape and marker, which contains at least the date it was bottled and what flavors were used. You can also label your first fermentation vessels to know when you started and how much longer it needs to ferment. Number three, plan out your brews. It can be really exciting to get started with kombucha home brewing, and once you get going, it becomes easier and quicker to bottle your delicious brews. In this case, it can become of interest to plan out your brews. Even just a little bit of planning can go a long way. Planning can include determining what kind of flavoring you want to introduce in your second fermenting, what bottles you'll be using, what kind of tea you want to use to continue brewing, and how long you should keep your brews fermenting. You may find that planning out your brews might help you in your endeavors. Number two, don't be afraid to let your first fermentation go a little longer. Your first fermentation is the most important step as it will form the basis for your second fermentation. As a result, you may want to make sure that your first fermentation is optimal and fermented enough. There have been countless times where a brewer started their second ferment while their first ferment was not ready, which resulted in spoiling their brews or having to wait longer. You can always use a straw to sample your ferment and see if it is sour enough. If it is sweet or neutral, then you should leave it a little longer. A bit of patience will definitely result in a better brewing experience. Number one, burp your bottles. Burping bottles is necessary unless you want a bottle bomb all over your kitchen. Burping is a very simple procedure. Simply take your bottle with your second ferment and pop it open. If it is fermenting very quickly, there will be plenty of gas or fizz. The purpose of burping is to eliminate carbonation buildup within the bottle. Burping it releases the gases and makes it much less likely to explode when you are least expecting. If you liked our video, be sure to click like and subscribe for more How Expert Top 10 videos for all topics from A to Z in the future. Also, let us know what other topics you want us to do a How Expert Top 10 video in the future in the comments below. Thank you, have an amazing day, and take care. How Expert publishes quick how-to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more.